Hey guys, in this video I'm going to go over aligning an AM radio using a signal generator and a VTVM. Specifically I'll be aligning a GE212 AM FM radio that I recently restored. Ideally you will be able to track down the alignment instructions for your radio. I was able to go to a website it's called Nostalgia Air and I found all the instructions for the whole alignment procedure. So I recommend you check out Nostalgia Air. If they don't have it, maybe go to the Antique Radio Forum and ask around. But even if you can't find it, the techniques I'll be discussing will apply to pretty much any super heterodyne AM radio. Now, what is an, a what is an alignment? What, what am I talking about? Well, if you look at the schematic here, you got your AM input antenna and you have a local oscillator. So you have two signals that come together and get mixed in the mixer and then there are a couple IF stages, intermediate frequency stages, that pick out the station you're trying to tune in. And those need to be tuned to a specific frequency. That's called the intermediate frequency or the IF frequency. In this radio and many other radios, the manufacturer chose to use 455 kilocycles or kilohertz. Older radios you might see 175 or uh, other frequencies, but they'll all be less than 550 because 550 is the end of the AM band and the IF frequency needs to be lower than that because that's what the local oscillator runs at and you mix that with the input, the difference goes through the IF transformer. So to align this, we need to tweak the first AM IF transformer to be, uh, to be tuned to 455 and the same goes for the second IF transformer, T5. In each of those IF transformers, here's one of them, there's a slug at the top, there's a slug at the bottom. There's a hole in the top of the can, and there's a hole in the bottom of the can. And you can insert a plastic screwdriver-like device in there and rotate the cores and tune the coils. Right, to do that, you need to feed in a signal of 455 kilohertz and observe uh, the right point on your meter and you tune those slugs to get a maximum meter deflection. So, the two key things we need is an accurate signal generator and a decent meter. Your RF generator will need to be able to produce a signal of 455 kilohertz very precisely. So, uh, ideally your meter is calibrated. This one they even have a little mark here at 455. You put that needle right on it. Now if you got an old meter like this and you're not sure if it's calibrated, you don't know if it's accurate, well, one thing you can do is get yourself a frequency counter. And you see my, I'm off just a tad with this dial. I got 458. Let's tweak it down a bit. Move back up, and you get it right on 455. Or, if you happen to have a nice digital scope like this, mine can actually read frequency. So let's see, I'm about 455. Sine wave is a little bit is a little bit dirty out of this generator. There's some harmonics in there, so my scope's getting a little bit freaked out by it. But see, I'm pretty well on 455. Third thing you can do is use a radio. Now you wouldn't use an old radio like this. I'm talking about a modern digital radio or a handheld scanner, something that has a digital frequency readout. And what you do is you put that in an unused station like at 550 or 600, put your generator near it, put the, or put the test leads from it near it, and like say for instance, put this direct, exact, put your radio exactly on 600, AM 600, and then if you put this on AM 600, you should be able to hear it. If if this is calibrated, if it's not, if you got to put a little bit off of 60, that means your generator's off a bit. So get the schematic for it, get the uh, calibration instructions such that you can put this on 60, and then. Usually there's like a trimmer capacitor inside, and you tweak that a little bit to get this so that when you are on, say, 60, you really are generating 600 uh, kilohertz. 
Uh, so once you get that calibrated, look at your instructions and see where you're supposed to feed that signal in. In this case, they tell you right here, step one, two, click your frequency, so you put your signal generator at 455 and inject it at the 12BE6 tube uh, on the grid, which is pin 7, through a 0.01 microfarad capacitor. So I need to dig out a capacitor and fire up my soldering iron and solder it in. Oh, I think that's a 12BE6 tube down in there, so i got to find pin 7 tack a capacitor onto it and then hook my uh, generator up to it. Now as for where you hook up the meter, you have a couple options. If you have a VTVM which has a really high input impedance and won't affect the radio if you hook it into high uh, to sensitive areas, you can put it at the output of the AM detector. A regular volt ohm meter, something like that, has a much lower impedance and if you attach that to the AM detector, it's going to put such a heavy load on it, it's probably going to swamp out the signal and may affect the other areas of the, of the radio. So you can actually connect it right across the speaker, right across the voice coil. So, show you a schematic what I'm talking about. So, if you don't have a VTVM, you could actually connect your meter across the voice coil, which is here. Which is the uh, you know the high level audio output, which has enough oomph that it can drive an analog meter without loading down the rest of the radio. Now, if you have a sensitive VTVM, what you can do is attach it to the output of the AM detector, which in this case is, I believe, right here. So that's what I'm going to tap into with my VTVM. I've had all this stuff running for a while because it takes a little while for these uh, this tube equipment to, to stabilize so I've had this stuff on for about half an hour. So first thing I gotta do dial this in to 455 and attack in a capacitor I'll hook the leads from this generator up to that capacitor hook my VTVM uh, on the AM detector and then we'll see what kind of meter reading we get. Okay, here's my 0.01 microfarad capacitor going to my RF generator. Here's where I tapped into for the VTVM. Here's the reading I'm getting. Now you want to use a small signal on the input. If you really use a high level output of your RF generator, you're going to be swamping your meter in the circuitry. You want to get, you want to use a low, as low an input level signal as you can and still get a decent reading. So I've got this all the way down to the low setting and I've tweaked this down. And you can see that it is responding to this because as I turn this knob, the meter's moving. So I got on the lowest attenuation setting about halfway on the dial. And I've got my VTV and all the way down to 1.5 volt scale. Now first I said to tweak T5 and then T2. So they're suggesting that first I tweak the second stage, the one closer to the output, and then switch to the one that's closer to the input. So T5, I believe is this guy, I'll double check. T5 is indeed the one right next to the tube, so it's this guy. So here's my alignment tool, it's a piece of plastic, kind of file down. I have to have an end like a screwdriver blade. Put that in the top of the coil there. And I can feel the slug, it's a little bit stiff, but I can turn it. Now, I'll watch the meter. I'll turn the light off on my camera, I think the reflection's a little bit too harsh there. Alright, so as I tweak that coil, See, the meter's responding. Now I want to tweak that coil so that I get the largest meter reading. So, go back this way. At some point it's going to start moving the other way because I've gone past the peak point. Oh, I just went past it. So, back a little bit. Looks like... Right about there. 
Now I gotta go to the bottom of that coil, which is right down in there, and do the same thing. Too far. Right about there. Now, unless somebody's really been mugging around with your radio, it's probably not going to be off too much. Unless you had a bad IF transformer, like maybe there was a broken lead or you had to replace the mica caps, that kind of surgery is really going to throw them off, so you're really going to need to do an alignment. Also, I've heard horror stories where some <laughs> somebody who knew nothing about radios got one of these and saw all these things up here and took a screwdriver and, and tightened them down thinking that was part of the problem with the radio. <laughs> so which in which case is going to be horribly out of alignment. Uh, but in most cases I found that I just need to do to tweak these a hair just to, to really peak the performance. And finally T2. That's the one up closer to the front here. I don't think it really matters whether you do the top or the bottom first, but uh, they do recommend doing T5 first and then T2. Ooh, there it is. I think that's why. I think that this first stage is far more sensitive than the second stage. So you get that first, and then, then you do this one. That was off a little bit. And finally, get in here and do the bottom. And right about there. Alright, that's all there is to it for that part of it. Now, this radio has an internal AM antenna, which has a trimmer capacitor on it. This actually forms a tuned uh, circuit for the AM band to help reception even more. And I do believe that is part of this alignment here. Yes, that is what they call the RF alignment. And I think I... Uh, Let's see, they have a note on that, note 8. Oh, they just recommend you should align the AM RF before the FM RF. Alrighty. Ah, so you're supposed to put your signal generator on 1500 kilohertz and inductively couple it. What that means is you need to use something like this little homemade loop antenna I made uh, recently when I aligned this before and you hook your signal generator up to this and you put it about a foot away from this loop antenna and then you tweak that for the maximum response okay I've got my loop antenna which is six inches in diameter and four turns as I specify. It's about a foot away and running parallel to the internal antenna. It's hooked up to my RF generator which is set to 1500 kilohertz and I've turned on the internal modulation which is an AM modulation of about 400 hertz. I then tune the radio so much, such that I can hear it. So this is in effect uh, an AM transmitter transmitting through this loop antenna and I'm picking it up on this radio. So you want to tune the radio and so you get the maximum uh, volume of that tone. And then you simply tweak that capacitor on the antenna. In this case there's a hole in the back of the uh, there's a hole in the back of the set and uh, put a screwdriver in there. And there we go. We'll tweak the capacitor. So Again, you want to get a maximum signal. So, 
right about there. Now the last thing you would possibly need to do is tweak the local oscillator. So I got this right on 1500 kilohertz. Suppose when you look at your radio, the dial pointer is pointing to 1400 kilohertz. To fix that, rotate the dial so it's pointing to 1500, and then tweak the local oscillator trimmer cap up here such that they all line up. So the 1500 needle is picking up the 1500 transmitter. The needle's broken off on mine, so until I repair that, I really can't do that operation. Uh, and that's all there is to it. I'll, I'll remove all the stuff, disconnect it, pull out this capacitor, and then uh, try to pull in some stations and see uh, see how the radio sounds. For 76 yards and afterwards, he spoke with ESPN radios. And here's the radio back together, playing very nicely. In the second quarter, you hurt your knee, finally got some carries. How did your team bounce back? Well, the first half, you know, it was... Pulling in plenty of stations. So if you have any questions about the technique I used or the equipment I used, leave a comment and I'll try to answer your questions.